Now, let's go. First of all, knowledge. Knowledge of what? For, when you, and I want you to use this. You can use this as a pattern, I do, for reading the Scriptures. When I read the Scriptures, what am I looking for primarily? Well, let me digress a little bit. This is what I'm looking for primarily when I read the Scriptures. Who is God? Who is God? That's my number one question when I'm reading any passage of Scripture. What does it tell me about God? What does it tell me, not only about God, but about God for me? Yeah. And then, what does it tell me about what God has decreed for me? What has He decreed about me, about my life? What has God done? What has He done? In history, in the world, in the gospel. What has He done for me also? And then finally, what will He do? But now let's just look. Knowledge of who God is. That's the first thing I'm looking for when I'm studying the Scriptures. What does it tell me about God? Because if the Scriptures reveal to me this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God, it has a way of increasing my joy when I know that this wonderful being is in control of my life. Jeremiah says this, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, and let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth, for I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Now, saint, I've talked enough to enough of you to know that many times when you study the attributes of God, it is not an encouragement to you. Because you're studying the moral attributes of God without doing it in light of the gospel. So when you hear God is holy, 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 you kind of cringe. Because you look in the mirror and see your own life and you recognize, I'm not really that holy. And so instead of it leading to hymns of praise, you write a song like this, you are holy and I am a worm, step on me and watch me squirm. You, you do things like that. So you see, holiness is something to be afraid of. Why? Because you see the reality of your sin, but you're not looking at the gospel. Holiness now, for you, is wonderful. This God will never sin against me. He will never be common. He will never be profane. This God who is for me is holy. And then you hear about righteous. He doeth all things in a right manner. He is wrong in nothing. Now, if I see that apart from the gospel, the only thing I can see is judgment. But if I see that in the gospel, I say this, if God is for me, who can be against me? If God, not 25% for me, not 75% for me, not 99% for me, this holy, righteous God is 100% for me and 100% of His holiness and 100% of His righteousness and 100% of His justice is for me. It's on my side. Do you see that? It's no longer against me. And so if I look at who God is in light of the gospel, then all these things that when I was a sinner were a terror to me, they're now a joy to me. I'm not afraid of them. Not because I look in the mirror deluded and see some perfect person who's not there. No, but because I know the gospel. Everything has changed. When Paul says his argument in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. New things have come. What is he saying? He's actually talking about probably the last chapters in Isaiah when it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. You're the beginning. You ever realize that? You are the beginning of a new heaven and a new earth. And Paul's saying, as you, if you look at it in the context, he's basically saying this, 
I look at Christ now completely different. And in the light of Christ, I look at everything else completely different. Who I am before God, my past, my present, my future, God's relationship with me, my relationship with God, it is completely changed. So see, now in light of the gospel, I don't, I don't hide myself from the Bible. I don't sit there and go, oh, don't tell me he's holy. It scares me. It doesn't scare me anymore. Not at all. It's wonderful. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Please. Because this God who's holy and righteous and just and everything else is for me. Do you see that? Okay, the people from Georgia say amen. <laughs> it's, he's for me. Do you see that? Now, what else? Not only who is God, what has God decreed? What has He decreed? I mean, before the foundation of the world, what did He write down with regard to what He's going to do with you? It's amazing. Whenever you hear the word foreknowledge, realize that it also has within it God's sovereignty, but it also has this idea of His plan is not something He just threw together. He, this is, if we can say such a thing, this has taken the full force of all His mental faculty. This is, He's thought about this. Not only did He choose you before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, He set forth a plan of what He's going to do with you. Just look for a minute at just, at just creation. Romans 8, 21. The creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the slavery of the glory of the children of God. Into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Think about that. Everything in creation that moans and groans along with my bones. Everything in creation that gets old and tears down and breaks and is ruined and is dirty. It's all going to be set free. He decreed it. Not only set free, but turned over to the children of God. That's enough to make me greatly happy. 